Hello and welcome everybody, King Demps here. And today we're going to take a little look at the FunSpark Ulti Finals that just finished. Obviously Gambit were the overall winners, beating Entropic in the final. And seeing as this was the first kind of tier one event of the year, obviously it had the number two team in the world in the form of Gambit. It had a couple of top 10 teams in the form of Astralis and Entropic and just generally a pretty strong field of, of sort of top 20-ish teams. I thought it was a good time to kind of take stock, have a little look at how teams did at this event, maybe what kind of storylines and narratives are starting to unfold. So obviously we're going to kick off with Gambit, who had a pretty imperious run at this event. Yes, they lost a couple of maps, but really by the time the semi-finals and the grand final rolled around, they were unstoppable, to be honest. Um, I think they didn't allow either Entropic, uh, they didn't allow Big to get past 10, as you can see, didn't allow Big any more than 10 rounds in this series. And then Entropic got 12 on Dust2, but really, I think that map always looked like it was going to Gambit. Um, obviously, an excellent start to the year for Gambit. Anything less than winning this event was probably unacceptable. Um, I said that in my preview for this event. And they did it in, in, in the fashion you'd expect. They kind of ran through this tournament, didn't really ever have any problems in S-Series. Yes, they dropped a couple of maps earlier on, but first event in the year, that's kind of understandable, shaking off the ring rust a little bit. And it was all the players you want to see doing well, doing well. Um, up until the final, it was Shiro, it was Hobbit, and it was Axile. And then in the final, really only one person was going to take home the MVP. Shiro was superlative throughout the entire event. Um, and it looks like he really is taking it seriously, that idea of going further than he did last year. And, you know, obviously he took home the number four spot on the HLTV top 20 and he really seems to be stating his case and saying look I'm this is the stall I'm setting out for this year I'm gonna go and try and be the best player in the world um and this was exactly the kind of performance you need to show at this type of event he blew everyone out of the water he was incredible in every series uh didn't really have a poor map so yeah great stuff from Gambit Obviously, the next team we will talk about is Entropic, who made their way to the grand final. Again, in my preview, I said this was one of the teams who really needed to be trying to threaten to take this trophy away from Gambit. In the end, in the grand final, they didn't really do that. It wasn't a particularly close series. Gambit blew them out on the first map of Mirage, largely due to kind of Shiro and Axile. Was it Axile? Let's just double check that. I don't want to uh, talk out of my arse here. No, it was, it was Naphany, actually. He was playing really well that map. Got it twisted in my head. Um, but basically, the point is that it was never really close in that one. The point, obviously, is that it was never really a close series. So did Entropic really threaten to take the title home? Not really, but it's understandable. Gambit were the second best team of last year. Looked to be coming in in great form, so no shame there for Entropic. But they did what they had to do. Obviously got knocked down to the lower bracket by Gambit themselves. So again, no shame in losing that series. And they had a pretty close run through the lower bracket actually when you look at the games in this ecstatic game um it was very very tight and went all the way to overtime on the final map they just squeaked over the line because lackey or lack one i don't know how to pronounce his name um was basically spectacular really really good particularly uh in this series and then again in this big series it we really did go down to the wire. Very, very close in all three maps. Uh, no one in particular went ham in this series, but just in general across the team, there were tons of high impact rounds. So Entropic didn't maybe march through this event quite as convincingly as maybe they would have liked, but there is something to be said for being able to get through close series being held by a team and taking it all the way and then getting over the line. They did that consistently across three series really this uh this Astralis series was relatively close as well the final map uh, obviously going to 16 13 so that is definitely encouraging for Entropic they showed and they kind of have showed this as a team that they're very resilient they're very hard to put to bed in a series and I think that's super super important what were kind of the downsides for Entropic I think Elian kind of manifested his usual problem which is that he's a little bit inconsistent a little bit too inconsistent to be considered like a really, really top tier Orpa. Um, He had some incredible maps in this series, in this tournament, and also had some series where he kind of went missing. Like he wasn't all too great in the, uh, not the big series. Yeah, the ecstatic series, he was kind of not great. 
So that's probably Entropic's biggest, I think, woe is that if Elian gets a little bit more consistent, then I can really see Entropic being a super dangerous team. And he's got time. He's still young. This team in itself um, has only really been going for about a year or so. So there's definitely plenty of room uh, and a higher ceiling for Entropic to grow. And they definitely seem like all of the players have a pretty high ceiling in terms of impact as well. So I think the same Tropic team are going to have a good year and this was a great start for them. Next up is obviously third placed Big. Now, Big were obviously nowhere near Gambit, but I don't think anybody was anywhere near Gambit who were the eventual winners of this tournament, but they did well to come third. Um, they did what they had to. They beat Fnatic, which honestly, that wasn't a series I was expecting them to win, but they did so. And I think the biggest boon for Big throughout this event was that Searson looked really, really good again. He basically topped the series in all of their games. And that is something that Big need to go right if they are going to be a top 10 team this year. They need Searson to get back to his 2020 form when they were the best team in the world. And then if he can do that, then they don't need the new boy on the block, Farvan, to go absolutely mega ham. They just need him to be a stable and solid presence. And then they can be a top 10 team in the world. I really do believe that. I think in terms of structure, I think in terms of the, the structure, not only within the team, within the server, but also around the team outside of the game. I think NKJ seems a very intelligent guy and seems like a good coach. I think Big can do things this year, and I'm impressed with them, basically. that That's all I have to say about this tournament. I thought they looked good. They didn't look as good in the end as Gambit, particularly, and, and Tropic obviously squeaked past them, but that was a tight series. So that one really could have gone either way on a different day, and I think Entropic just had some really, really excellent clutch moments that got them over the line. So good stuff from Big. I would give this tournament like a 7, 8 out of 10. Definitely a good way to start the year. Farben seems like he needs a bit more time to integrate he didn't always seem comfortable but that will come with time this was their first event basically thumbs up for big as well now ecstatic were good in this event but the real revelation was fascia fascia was going absolutely ham during this lower bracket run obviously no one played particularly well in the opening series against entropic um i mean that vertigo went to like quadruple overtime or whatever but in general they didn't play all too great in that series but then once they got to the lower bracket, Fascia was just going ham. Look at this, 1.63. Oh, don't need to spend that. 1.51. You know, 1.28 in a loss. Like, he was putting up numbers. He was having incredible impact. He was ecstatic's, like, guy doing the work. He was the one who was getting the bulk of just the raw numbers, but also having incredible impact while doing so. Fascia was an absolute revelation. I think Wolfie was a little bit disappointing in general this event. Um, his only decent series really was in the K23 series. Um, he in general wasn't very good outside of that. Um, but I think he maybe needs a little bit of time. He hasn't played huge amounts of like tier one CS. So we'll give him some time and hopefully he will he will grow and develop into that role. But for Ecstatic, who are looking to kind of really break into that top 20 and make inroads and make it to some big events, I think this was a good showing for them. Um, they showed that they were definitely sort of like the top of that tier two pile, beating teams like Complexity, beating K23 relatively comfortably. I mean, I know this was a big overtime game and this one had a 16-14, but in the end, the, the second map in both of those series was pretty comfortable for Ecstatic. So I think they showed really, really positive signs. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of Ecstatic going forward uh, into 2022. I think they're definitely a team who are just hovering around that top 20 mark, who I want to keep an eye on. We'll talk about K23 next, who again sit just outside the top 20 at number 22. They came into this event apparently with no practice. Apparently they basically came back and played this event. So um, really good stuff to beat Astralis. Although Astralis at this event didn't look great. We'll talk about them in a minute. Um, but beating Astralis is no mean feat, even if Astralis aren't at peak form. They've got some good players still. Blame F went absolutely ham in this series, and K23 still came out on top. So kudos to them. Took a map off big as well. Again, nothing to be sniffed at. But really, once they got down to this lower bracket, the ecstatic game was a little bit disappointing. I think K23, this version of the lineup, um, you know, ever since removing Mo and Adren, they've looked much better. Uh, and they look a promising top 20 team. I think maybe with a bit more practice, then we can kind of gauge where K23 are at. So I don't read too much into this event, like I say, considering they didn't really do much work coming into it. So still looking forward to seeing more from K23 this year, but it definitely wasn't, for example, as promising as the ecstatic performance. But, you know, if they're not pracking, then 
it's kind of understandable. Next up is Astralis, who probably had the most disappointing event of all. Um, they won one series against Fnatic, who themselves looked a little bit off, looked a little bit like they were coming in from the off-season cold. And really, the only player individually who was particularly good for Astralis was Blame F. Glaive was decent in these two series, but like Blame F was the only one really doing anything in the K23 series. Config had like a half on overpass, and he really kind of disappeared for the rest of the match. So I wasn't really impressed with Astralis. Not only were the individuals not looking good, but they were looking a little bit tactically short as well. Like, particularly in the K23 game, like, it was a very messy series. It didn't look like Astralis was super well-drilled with a well-oiled machine that you're usually used to seeing Glaive operate with. So, I think Astralis definitely have a lot more work to do if they're going to get anywhere near the pedigree that the name carries. So, yeah, this was definitely a very disappointing event from Astralis. And except for Blame F, Blame F still looked really good. But Blame F tends to always look individually pretty solid, even when his team isn't performing well. So, but yeah, Astralis mm, kind of got to give him a thumbs down for this event. It was pretty crap. Now, the two remaining teams, obviously, we have to talk about are Complexity and Fnatic. I'll talk about Fnatic first. Obviously, disappointing to go out in straight series, but they did get kind of a rough draw in the sense they had to play big, and then they had to play Astralis. They didn't, for example, get to play Complexity or Ecstatic or K23. Like, they didn't get to play any of the, you would perceive to be slightly weaker teams at the event. However, it was big with a new lineup, admittedly a much improved big with this new lineup. So you can kind of look at that series either way. Maybe Fnatic should do better because big have a new player, but maybe because big look a little bit better with Farvin in the lineup, it's not such a shame to lose that one. But I definitely think Astralis did not look amazing at this event, so they probably could have won that series. They did take maps in both. They didn't look atrocious across both series, like, for the whole thing. Um, I think definitely individually they were lacking a little bit of firepower. If you look at the ratings here, they're kind of, like, not looking too hot. And I think that's something that is a little bit disappointing, particularly Mezzi. Mezzi looked, like, pretty crap at this event, uh, like a 0.98 in this and a 0.9 in that. He was not looking as hot as he was at the end of last year. So I suspect with a little bit more time to warm up, a little bit more time to get into the year, Fnatic will look better. I think, again, they look like a team that definitely has just come off of a break. So not reading too much into it for Fnatic, but still definitely disappointing. And the final team are Complexity. We're not going to read very much into this at all because JT was playing with a billion ping. Um, obviously, wasn't able to get to Europe to play with the rest of the team. Um, so, yeah, just can't really read too much into it. Floppy looked good, um, but Floppy is good. We know Floppy's a good player. They picked up a map off Gambit, which is actually kind of impressive considering. And it was on Vertigo, which is like a Gambit map. Little bit worrying, although Gambit's Vertigo hasn't been as imperious as it was through the kind of first portion or middle portion, as it were, of last year. Basically, you can't really read into it for complexity. So, free pass on this tournament. JT was playing with a billion ping. First tournament with the new lineup. It would have been really exciting to see them at this event with the full lineup, with no asterisks next to it. But we didn't get that, unfortunately. So, not going to read too much into this one for complexity. Still looking forward to seeing them at the next event. Still very interested to see where the ceiling is with this complexity team because if everything fires on all cylinders for them, they really could be dangerous at events like these. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Just a quick recap to look at some of the narratives coming out of this event. It was a fun one to kick off the year. I recommend going back and watching some of it if you missed it. It was some entertaining games. I think particularly some of the ecstatic games and entropic games were very good because there was some back and forth and some tight maps. And Gambit just looked really good, particularly across these two games. This is the type of event where you kind of watch Gambit's final and semi-final and you get excited for the rest of the year. That's how good they looked in those two games you know the drill guys like favorite subscribe all of that jazz if you have any content that you want to see pop it down in the comments box below and if you didn't like it doors over there